Dear students, you are welcome to another segment on share knowledge that is CPU scheduling algorithms. Here we are just going to discuss two basic and very important components under this CPU scheduling algorithms. Now what exactly the CPU scheduling algorithms means? Let me put it like this. CPU scheduling algorithm is used to select among the process processes in memory in memory so you have to remember that any process which need to execute the processor should be in the memory next that should be or that are ready ready that are ready to execute now when I, when I say select the process in the memory and that are ready to execute how this function has to take place in such a way that every process through CPU or every process is allocated to the CPU one by one that means CPU will not process every process at a one at a one stretch if, a, if it is a single CPU and if it is a, there are more than one CPU then it can do a multiple process let's uh, take a simple uh, example to make you understand what exactly I mean. Let's condition, uh, take a condition that there is a process, there is a process and the process task T1, T2, T3 like that up to Tn. Now this task is taken and CPU will put under the running state and it will try to execute. So let us take that this is uh, taken under 4 second to reach from here to here and it takes a time to execute after uh, doing the processing let us take that it took 12 second. The another process is coming it took say 3 second and it executes after say 5 seconds. So like that when the various process comes one by one process it will be there in the memory and in the memory it should be in the queue conditions. That means first process will come say P1 let us take that this is P1, P2, P3, PM then this uh, let me put it as like this one say p1 p2 p3 pn that means in the queue if it is going like this so p1 will execute after that p2 will occupy this place everything will be like a shift right registers we put it like a shift right register and in that way the CPU will be processing one after another. Now here there are two very important algorithms under the CPU scheduling. So let me put it as a word uh, like uh, uh, types of algorithms, types of algorithms.
there are two types of algorithms. One, we termed it as pre MTU scheduling algorithm and another is non pre MTU scheduling. Now what exactly this pre and non pre MTU scheduling it means? I give a very simple example as a layman. Assume that you are starting from your home and you want to go to college, from home to college. So best way to reach from the home to college is to catch hold of college bus. If you catch hold of college bus, what will happen? It starts from your home point and it will take you to the college. You will not be, you are not allowed to step down from the bus in the middle. Rather, you have to board from the point where it is, where you want to uh, catch the bus and you have to step down where you are, where, up to where this particular bus is being allowed to take you. That is the point I am uh, sharing as a home to college. A process which starts from one point and reaches to the end point without being interrupted in the middle as we have seen in the my earlier discussions of uh, ready queue and running state situations and waiting states such type of schedulers. If there is no interruptions between the home to college, that particular process is termed as a non preemptive schedule. Now, assume that the, the similar way example I put it here you start from the home and you are going to college by using a private bus. So, when you are using a private bus and uh, traveling, automatically you have to come across various hurdles. Hurdle means maybe that one bus is going up to certain point. From the other point you have to catch all another bus. From the other point you have to catch all the whole auto and go. So you find that the task, your, your process is from what? From the home to college. But you have carrying the various process and then only you are able to reach to that particular destinations. That means the, the same process P1 is there but you are being given a different different methods by means of which you are carrying out. So that's why this is one process, this is another process, this is another process, that's how you are able to do. So these are the, this, if any process which the, uh, causes you to step down and do a new process uh, invention, to go to the next point or you are finding a new process to go to the next point that type of mechanism is called as a preemptive scheduling so let me put it in a more in a precise way and a technical way a preemptive scheduling is that scheduling where you are having a states like a you are in the running state and you are going to ready state or you are in a waiting state and you are going to ready state. That means in both these conditions, waiting and running uh, situations, if your state is changing to ready conditions, that is known as a preemptive. And in here what happens? You are in running, but you are going to waiting. You are in running and you are finally terminate. So 
this particular process is known as waiting or a terminate is known as non preemptive scheduling so under this particular uh, two situations preemptive and the non preemptive uh, scheduling you find that the running state running and uh, running and a ready state are waiting and a ready state or the running to waiting and a running to terminate these two states has to analyze in a very clear manner so that the preemptive and non preemptive scheduling will be very clear to you i put further in this way that whenever you are in the preemptive state cpu you can allow the cpu to break in a various interval and you can take away from the running process that means you can break